Thank you, Honorable Minister. Good morning and welcome to this session with uh, Mr. Piyush Goel, uh, the Honorable Minister for Commerce and Industries and Railways. Honorable Minister, thank you very much for taking time out of your very, very, very busy schedule at this point in time. We know and I and probably you uh, you are one uh, who would hit, be hitting record numbers on the number of VCs that you do to keep uh, keep us engaged in terms of being uh, listening to us and hearing us. Uh, different communities are from the industry. You are always in touch besides your own uh, ministerial colleagues and other meetings. But very, I, I must put on record the number of consultations that you do with the with the industry is, is really phenomenal and gives us so much of motivation in these very difficult times over the last 90 days. And uh, as, as I said, that these are indeed very difficult times. If these had been normal times, we would have been meeting in Binduong in Vietnam for this meeting and this session, but COVID has forced us all to this virtual meeting. Nonetheless, we uh, hope things will normalize to a great extent and we would actually welcome you, Honorable Minister, to Binh Duong in, in person next year. Uh, uh, for this event, uh, just as a background, uh, CII's partnership with Horasis uh, for the India meeting started somewhere around tw 2015 at uh, Interlaken in Switzerland. And then we have gone to various other countries promoting India, looking at how uh, the world could do business with, uh, with, uh, 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 with India. It, we, we, we met in Cascais in, in Portugal, in Interlaken again, and in Malaga. Uh, uh, and, and we had various, various edi uh, uh, editions across the world where we were connecting with the globe and India. And our collaboration has really successfully resulted in stronger participation also from India at successive meetings at different locations uh, uh, and country each year. And the global audience at these meetings gives us, uh, uh, gives our government leaders and the, uh, people like yourself, Honorable Minister, for especially from the center and also from the states, chief ministers who participate, an opportunity to highlight uh, all the good work that is being done in the policy front in terms of making India and the states more attractive for business and foreign investments. And we also take large senior business delegations uh, from India to uh, to these meetings each year. And these platforms have really given us uh, uh, an opportunity to explore new markets and new areas of business partnership. At uh, this uh, year's meeting, we have uh, obviously an even larger particip participation. And thanks to this use of this digital platform, we have 44 countries represented apart from India with over a thousand people who have registered. However, coming to the topic of this meeting, Honorable Minister, since the end of March, for close to two months, India was in a state of lockdown, which helped us deal better with the pandemic. But the shutdown of all economic activities has had its anticipated impact on the economy. And since uh, sometime around mid-May, if one can say, the lockdown was lifted in phases and the government unveiled a slew of measures to help the Indian economy battle and recover from the adverse effects of the COVID-19, uh, with a focus, of course, on promoting Atmanirbhar Bharat or self-reliant India, transformational and structural reforms we have seen uh, being introduced at several key areas, which will be instrumental in rebuilding the Indian economy and pave the way for a sustained economic revival. And the, the, it's a slew of reforms, slew of measures which have been taken from the fields, uh, from the for starting from agriculture to MSME to public sector enterprises, power, coal, mining, FDI, and so on and so forth. And at uh, the very recently concluded CII's annual session this month, when we were celebrating our 125 years, the Honorable Prime Minister of India had stated that the government has taken a long term view of the economy and announced several far reaching measures to reform the economy. And he stated that the reforms announced have been systematic planned, integrated, interconnected, futuristic, and are all about creating a strong enterprises, generating employment, robust supply chains, which would get growth back very soon and would make India self-reliant in the long term by focusing, he said, on five I's he talked about, intent, inclusion, investment, infrastructure and innovation. I, must, I thought I must mention these very important five I's through which we are structuring our plan from the industry in India. And he also called upon the industry to stand strong with the government in achieving this, this vision. While we in the country really stand committed to working hand in hand with the government to get India back on its growth path, 
one person who has always been there with us, and I was mentioning that at the very beginning, whenever we needed a, a guide and a person, a friend of the industry, and especially today, as the industry tries to navigate through the COVID-induced in, crisis, our honorable minister must must thank him and compliment him. He has been one of the most dynamic and action oriented ministers. And we have been witness to his keenness to understand the industry issues, the pain points and look for solutions while moving ahead with concerns for the individual's health and safety uppermost in his mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Minister Goel is in charge of two of the most important portfolios at this point in time, commerce and industry and also railways very heavy portfolios both as you can all well appreciate and since he has been the minister of commerce and industry he has taken on a huge number of policy decisions to ensure that we in the industry and trade have a most facilitative environment to operate in india innumerable consultations have been organized with industry the minister spends long hours going through each and every recommendation made by uh, in, uh, made by industry the other day Many complimented the Honorable Minister for his listening ability and, uh, and listening to very different types of people speaking on different issues. And today, uh, 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 he has been meeting with exporters for hours to work out new policies and procedural improvements to give a fillip to the export sector of India or to the manufacturing in India as to how India can become competitive, take advantage of the global situation as it has been panning. Similarly, in the areas of railway, the minister is working relentlessly to make Indian railways, which is amongst the largest in the world, one of the most efficient, safe and modern. And Mr. Goyal's tenure has seen Indian railways achieve its uh, best ever safety record in 2018, uh, 2019. Additionally, of course, uh, the honorable minister oversaw the launch of the first indigenous semi-high speed train, the Vande Bharat Express between Delhi and Varanasi. Uh, the Honorable Minister has also led many other portfolios in the past, including new energy, coal mines, etc. Uh, uh, and and uh, in each of these areas, he has left an indelible mark. The power, coal and uh, new uh, renewable energy uh, uh, ministries led transformational changes, if one can say, in India's power sector, including the fast tracking of electrification of nearly 18,000 unelectrified villages in some of the remotest and the inaccessible parts of our country, the rollout of the most comprehensive power sector reform ever, which we know, Uday, uh, the success of the world's largest LED bulb uh, distribution program, Ujala, for energy efficiency, and massive proliferation of renewable energy through the world's largest renewable energy expansion program. Many other achievements and some of them which include the elimination of coal shortages to improve the energy security of India and successful conduct of uh, transparent e-auctions of coal blocks. He also received the fourth annual Karnat Prize in 2018 for path-breaking transformations in the India's energy sector. One can go on and on, but I wanted to give this introduction to this international audience uh, because you will relate to the speech that he would give now uh, because he really covers the entire aspect, aspect of uh, economic development and industry and the strengths that India has and how India can globally connect. He would also uh, have, I, I would request him to speak about uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat, which is self-reliant uh, India, which I spoke to, which and how it means and how we in India will be self-reliant self and yet be very strongly connected to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure and my honor to present to you Mr. Piyush Goel, the Honorable Minister for Commerce and Industries and Railways of the Government of India. Mr. Goel, sir. You're on mute. Even after so many VCs, you still forget. Huh? <laughs> Thank you very much, Chandrajit. Namaste to all the participants. Greetings to all the dignitaries. Thank you very much uh, for the effort of Horacius and CII to conduct this event, even in such trying times, use the virtual networks to initiate this very important discussion on how we in India should open up for business again. In fact, uh, I have always believed that such interactions and flow of ideas from all directions 
are always helpful for all of us in government, policy makers, and for business, working together in partnership to revive this mood, the sentiment, and actual business on the ground much faster. In fact, yesterday, all of us celebrated Father's Day. And I must confess, I took the evening off after my last VC, where we were also discussing, by the way, manufacturing, domestic shipping industry. We were discussing what we can do to improve the logistics cost, bring down one detriment to domestic manufacturing and encourage more participation of the private sector in the logistics business. So being a Sunday and Father's Day, I promised my children who are both here only a, for a few more days with me. And I tell you what a joy it was to spend the evening with the children. But at the same time, it also reminds you of what the last note by the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, in 1948 had said, expressing his very deep social thinking. And I would like to quote, Recall the face of the poorest and weakest man you have seen and ask yourself if this step you contemplate is going to be of any use to them. I think no better day than Father's Day to reflect on what the father of the nation left behind for us to think of. And if you look at our track record of six years before I come to the COVID and post-COVID world, the foremost priority of the government over 2014 to 2020 has been to strengthen the lives of the poor, of the laborers, of our farmers, of our daily wage earners. And we also recognize that it's government, business, social organizers, think tanks, associations representing different sectors of society when we all come together, that's when we can make a difference to the lives of the people. If you look at the structural reforms of the last six years, be it electrification going to every single home in the country, a hundred million toilets being set up so that nobody is ever deprived of good sanitation facilities at their home and workplace. The Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana nearly 20 million homes being provided to the poor and the lower middle class to give them a better environment in their homes. The Jamdhan Yojana by which financial inclusion was taken to another level altogether. 380 million accounts opened for those who were on the margins, deprived of uh, even a bank account for almost 65, 70 years after independence. The Mudra Yojana, providing 240 million small loans, loans very often as low as uh, 500 or or $1,000 with a maximum of $7,000 in it, uh, or rather with a maximum of $14,000, but an average ticket size of about $1,500 or $2,000, providing 220 million farmers not only with uh, a soil health card, but also ensuring that they get a different, a, a variety of support systems, including the direct benefit transfer of about a hundred dollars to each of the farmers every year. A very small gesture to appreciate the good work that they have done. The Ujwala Yojana taking 80 million poor families out of out of uh, the traditional cooking mediums and providing them with good quality cooking gas at their homes. And finally, the Ayushman Bharat Yojana, where 500 million Indians were provided the comfort of free healthcare. And why I mentioned all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is for you to reflect how all of these are today helping us in the comeback as we unlock India from the very, very severe pandemic, which has affected the entire world, notwithstanding its severe impact on India.
Of course, the lockdown was essential at that point of time. India was very ill prepared over, despite 70 years of independent India, we were very ill prepared in terms of our ability to fight this pandemic. At that stage, we had barely a thousand testing capacity a day, thousand a day. Today, we are 125,000 a day. We had barely a few thousand personal protective equipment, PPEs. Today, we manufacture 300,000 every single day. At that point of time, we would have run out of oxygen, would have run out of ICU beds, would have, would not have had enough isolation wards, would not have been able to provide for enough masks so that the entire country can be saved. We were worried about potential medicine availability in terms of even basic paracetamol or at that point of time. We had to be made aware of the very serious and detrimental effects of the pandemic needed time and i must compliment all of you on this uh, uh, on this uh, session today and 1.3 billion indians for the collective effort and the fact that the entire nation stood as one as we were fighting this pandemic as we were preparing the nation for coming out of this very severe crisis the entire nation stood as one we have been able to, in many ways, surmount some very unexpected uh, challenges. If I may mention briefly, the biggest one was spitting in public. I mean, many of us have seen, many of the foreigners also have seen, how it was something that was literally found to be uncontrollable. But in the last 60 days, 90 days, that consciousness that has come into every citizen has really helped us take Swachh Bharat, a clean India, to the next level. And I believe, collectively, with the effort of 1.3 billion Indians, with the support of Horace's, CII, all of you in business and trade, with the collective effort of world leaders working as one, we shall be able to overcome this crisis also and successfully address the challenges in the post-COVID world. A few data points which will help you appreciate how we have fared better than the rest of the world. Despite having 17% of the population of the world, our cases are still under 5% of the world corona affected patients. Our recovery rate is now at about 56% with uh, nearly 230,000 of the persons affected having already recovered. And in terms of deaths, we are still under 3% of the world deaths. Now, these are just data points to reflect how this fight against COVID, a very fine example of collective federalism, a very fine example of effective communication and cooperation amongst all stakeholders has been tackled. The World Health Organization also has appreciated the good work that India has done. and. I am very confident with the Atma Nirbhar Bharat package, including the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana, providing relief to large sections of the underprivileged and marginalized sections of society, we shall be able to get back livelihoods on track, get back business on track. Uh, the Honorable Prime Minister shared some of the green shoots that have been reflected in the last few days since I look after import export. I must share with you that while we were 60% down in exports in April, we were able to improve it to about only 35% down in May. And currently we are at about 10 to 12% down in June. So we have, in, in a sense, reached up to 88 to 90% of the level of exports that we had in June 2019 in the current month, in the first two weeks. I'm awaiting the third week results, which I shall get by tomorrow. The railways are freight loading, despite the fact that we continue to move the engine of freight throughout the pandemic and ensure that not a single place in the country 
there was a shortage of food grain or fertilizer or essential supplies or coal to keep our power plants running electricity in the homes water also is dependent on electricity our internet and communication is dependent on electricity not a single day did we have a complaint through the lockdown period because coal fertilizer food grains vegetables fruit milk other essential supplies were taken to the nook and corner of the country throughout the this lockdown period and i am happy to share with you yesterday's figures because i think that's most relevant to our conversation today yesterday we were able to move about 95% of the freight that we did on 21st of june 2019 so we are just 5% down what it was in june on june 21st 2019 if i take june as a whole we are about 8% down from 1st to 21st june in terms of freight loading i believe by july we should be at par and i'm looking for growth from uh, august september onwards in fact uh, another data point which intelligent uh, business users such as you will be happy to note the the average speed of a freight train on 21st june 2019 was 22.98 kilometers per hour say 23 kilometers per hour yesterday we clocked 41.74 kilometers per hour now obviously all the passenger trains are not running so we do get a free run but we are using this time intelligently to complete long awaited maintenance works we are using this time to interconnect many lines which needed long hours of shutdown and we are also using this time to rewrite the timetable of the railways more intelligently bringing freight trains and parcel trains into the timetable so that we can assure businesses committed delivery over long distances in a short period of time thereby unclogging the railway networks and making sure that we can move much larger volumes through the railway and i invite all of you to expand your engagement with the railways give us some good ideas how we can double the traffic on the or the freight traffic on the railways given that my target is to double the average uh, speed of the freight train obviously i'll open up new opportunities to expand my freight uh, basket and as i expand the freight basket i'll be able to bring down the freight rates thereby making logistics more competitive in the country i'm sharing all of this with you ladies and gentlemen only to tell you that we have used this time intelligently to improve ourselves prepare ourselves for a better tomorrow now there is sometimes this talk and very eminent economists and some very very prominent faces on television often are articulating their vision of distributing thousands of dollars and billions of dollars as a short term measure and uh, so called supporting demand they are talking of larger packages to be effectively distributed i do wish that intelligent people such as you on this call will understand that india has to use this crisis to prepare ourselves for a sustainable future you don't blow up limited resources in the short run and then leave your flanks open in the long run you use this time to see what reform can be done you use the time, this time to see improvements just as in business whenever the times are tough that's when you look at extraordinary performance that's when the tough people show their mettle what do you do when businesses are going through a downtime you start improving productivity you look at wasteful expenditure you start tightening the belt you start seeing at more better ways of doing the same thing you monitor each process better you expect the laggards to go out and the performers to demonstrate better performance you look at your critical paths and see what you need to do to improve scale productivity sometimes you expand in a downturn 
at lower cost to gain when the demand gets back and it's full of foolish of anybody to think that the heavens have fallen on us or the skies have fallen on us i mean if you recall asterix and obelix in the good old uh, comic book series the the king was always concerned that the sky is going to fall on his head but the optimist that asterix was knew that that is not going to happen and he was always on the move coming up with new and innovative solutions and that's exactly what prime minister modi is doing making effective use of this time while on the one hand he prepares the nation for tomorrow to fight the covid pandemic he's continuously concerned what india needs to do so ppes did not increase to such large level of production or ventilators did not come up in such large measure in such short time or we have not been able to expand our oxygen availability to hospitals or our icu beds or our testing facilities just out of the blues it has called for relentless planning the honorable prime minister always thinks four steps ahead he is not looking at current data and statistics he is looking at what is the potential future and the atmanirbhar bharat package really comes out of that thinking that proactive preparing the nation for tomorrow that proactive understanding that it's not the short run that we have to only be concerned about suddenly and all of these figures reflect that we are concerned about the short run we are addressing issues on the ground and chandrajit at least will remember barely 3 or 4 days into the lockdown in one such interaction when we were engaging with the troubles that movement of goods were facing because the cop on the street couldn't differentiate what's essential what's not essential it was on one such call that the thought came that actually people will only move essential goods nobody is going to buy televisions and refrigerators today so why not let movement of goods be free and chandrajit took less than what 8 hours or 12 hours and we had the notification out allowing movement of all goods same day same day appreciating that obviously what will move is essential or what is stuck on the road and i think that's this collaboration that industry and business has demonstrated in the last uh, 90 days a lot of the things that have uh, happened and will continue to happen as the honorable finance minister and the honorable prime minister have said on more occasion than one it's a continuing journey governments don't work at one time and stop that this is it and no further we continue to engage with all of you we continue to have our internal engagements and i can assure you we are very responsive to the needs of business and industry on an ongoing basis we will continue to engage with you we will continue to undertake more reforms to ensure ease of doing business to attract greater investment interests both from domestic investors and businesses and international investors will continue to make it easy to invest and attract uh, fdi and investment into the country promote exports but our focus is going to be more on sustainable growth our focus is not going to be you give out a handout and exports will grow i have been doing my studies for the last one year and we've had so many engagements chandrajit both before covid and in the last 90 days i am personally convinced subsidies have never done no good for business subsidies have actually helped us remain dependent on clutches and never helped us really engage with the world from a position of strength and power i believe when we work together we work together intelligently to provide you the enablers of doing business there may be certain short term measures where affirmative action or subsidies can help certain sectors in the short term and you will not find us wanting in that but we did that for api we did that for medical devices we did that for electronic products and we are open to fresh ideas in different sectors we understand the pain points that certain sectors are still going through and it will take some time for them to overcome we understand and statistics are always being monitored in terms of spending which is the sectors which will come up first 
and which are the sectors which may take longer we ass i assure you we will be a part of this dialogue with you continuously while we focus on champion sectors where cii fiki asochem i would invite horaces also to activate uh, and get more engaged with us and so many other industry associations across the country so many sectoral groups so many export promotion organizations including uh, industry specific groups like our engagements with the tire sector resulted in certain affirmative action from the government our engagement with the agro food processing sector helped us take such game changing and transformational reforms in the agriculture sector similarly the work we are doing on electric vehicles on chemicals and petrochemicals and uh, on textiles auto components uh, toys sports goods television sets uh, solar manufacturing in india ic electric integrated circuit manufacturing in india there's a vast pool of opportunities waiting to happen in india it's for you and us to work together but it's finally for you in business to grab the opportunity when we talk of atmanirbhar bharat it is not that we are closing the doors in fact we are opening the doors in a bigger way we are not closing our mind and saying oh we all want only swadeshi products in india we want our businesses while becoming self reliant to also engage with the world to get the best of technology to invite pools of low cost capital we want to engage international businesses invite them to serve 1.3 billion indians as well as serve the rest of the world let's work together in this spirit of cooperation and collaboration i assure you this government will continue to listen and engage with you this government will continue to be a part of your suggestions and your efforts and together we will get back a v shaped recovery as predicted by shri subarao former rbi governor because this is not a natural disaster this is a temporary phenomenon a lot of people are getting into herd uh, immunity after all given the large size of india and the density of population these numbers that we are struggling with today are still quite reasonable our villages have been largely protected due to very proactive measures by uh, leaders such as yogi adityanath the honorable chief minister of uttar pradesh shri nitish kumar the honorable chief minister of bihar shivraj chauhan the honorable chief minister of madhya pradesh shri k chandrashekar rao the honorable chief minister of uh, telangana mr jagan mohan reddy mr uh, edipadi palani swami from uh, andhra pradesh and tamil nadu mr navin patnaik in odisha so we've had some wonderful examples of chief ministers who have been able to contain the pandemic yet accept with open arms and open heart millions of migrants back into their state but they have done it intelligently i compliment the states for the good work that they have done this is not the time to play politics as some people are doing this is the time to move the indian economy from that old command and control phenomena where businesses were dependent on government to the plug and play single window modern and efficient regulatory practices that the world desires and i invite all of you to work with us to get out of that conservative approach and look for bold decisions in business bold investment outreach from business and we will not be found wanting that's my personal assurance to each and every one of you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for your patience thank you thank you very much honorable minister thanks for that very very wide canvas that you have really uh, talked about and you covered and if you see the number of <clears throat> compliments that have come in in the chat box i mean i have not seen any adverse comment and everybody saying that i mean everybody the wow factor in, in, in during the course of the speech was phenomenal and and everyone appreciating the amount of work india has done and in fact i got even a, a, a message on the chat box which says full compliments to the indian railways for reaching goods to each and every nook and corner 
of the country due to the support of Indian Railways all the way through the shutdown in pandemic. So many, many such compliments have come in uh, across the world. Uh, but on the you know, being on the railways, um, I mean, there is another question from someone called Thomas Yu, who says that are there uh, special measures to promote uh, foreign investments during the pandemic in order to support the recovery of the Indian economy. You have alluded to it. You have made a, but this is one question which I thought that I'll put up to you. Chandraji, we are very open to new ideas. If there are yes. se sectors where you can convince me, I'm open to go move heaven and earth to move the sector. But you know that uh, my views sometimes are very, very uh, 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 probing. But I will invite Mr. Thomas Wu. I'm willing to listen to any good invite ideas. He may send me a, any sectors. By and large, India is open in almost every sector. We have some constraints on multi-brand retail, particularly because we have a large part of India dependent on the small corner store. In fact, the pandemic, it's the corner store, the mom and pop stores, which have kept the essential supplies going in all our homes. So I, I do think they've played a very important role. In fact, post-pandemic, the country recognizes their role even more. Similarly, in insurance, our expectations from the insurance companies was much more and deeper. Sadly, we feel let down. So there are a few sectors where we would like all of you to tell us if government has been found wanting in any way. I assure you, we will set it right. But we've opened up almost everything. But we do have certain security concerns. We have to balance our security concerns and the opening up of the economy. But foreign investment is more welcome in India than probably most parts of the world. But we certainly have to also take precaution that we don't get the wrong type of capital, which is opportunistic and which is not really for the good of the nation. With your permission, if I can put up a couple of more questions uh, for, for, for your consideration, please. You know, there's one interesting one which has come from the Silicon Valley. Again, you have actually, uh, by and large, answered this. Make in India was, in my opinion, a very good initiative from the government of India. What can be done to accelerate the Make in India implementation, given the disruptions created by COVID? That's from, uh, uh, from Mr. Zushi from Silicon Valley. Thank you. Good question. I think uh, just like I mentioned about the railways that we use this time to improve our freight competitiveness. Hopefully I can make freight uh, cheaper going forward. Similarly in industry, I think a lot of people have not appreciated the focus that the government is giving to high quality standards, to improving the scale of uh, consumption in the country and the support that we are willing to give in areas where there is a uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, I would say, substandard and uh, poor quality products coming into the country. India has finally evolved and has made up its mind that we are going to only accept good quality products. And even within the country, we are making an effort to improve the quality standards of our MSMEs. I think business and government together can really bring back that quality culture into the country can bring back that consciousness in our consumers that uh, India also makes good quality products. I have often on uh, many engagements told my officers that India should be recognized just like Germany is for its precision tools or the Swiss clocks for their uh, precise time. We all have to work together to get that consciousness of quality in the country. I think that one single step if all of us can collectively decide that I will not buy substandard material. And secondly, a little spirit to promote make in India, that if a particular product is one or two percent, a little bit here and there, uh, costlier than an imported product, probably even a little more than that costlier than an imported product. Very often it's sensible to buy Indian because in the short run, the large international companies can dump material at low prices, at very competitive prices. But in the long run, if Indian manufacturing doesn't survive or is not able to meet this competition, in the long run, we will have no options but to pay terrible prices for the same products. And we've seen that happen in certain sectors. I won't 
speak about it uh, right now. But in several sectors, we've seen India suffer the consequences of not having a strong uh, Indian manufacturing base. So one very interesting question, uh, which has also come up and would really like to put up to you, is on, on reforms. And the central government has uh, done a, a, a lot of reforms and it has really uh, uh, fulfilled most of the promises that it had made to India in terms of taking reforms ahead. The, the story of reforms is now really with the states of India. And uh, issues like lands, labor, all of them also come under the states of India. What, how, what is central government doing and what would the central government do to convince the state now to carry forward these reforms at their level, which is most uh, significant at this point in time? I think states also realize that if they want to increase their revenue, they want to provide jobs to their people in their state, they will have to engage with industry and be more contemporary in their thinking. I'm happy to share with you that nearly 15 or 17 states have done some game-changing labor reforms in the last month or so. Game-changing labor reforms. A lot of it will now come out in public domain in the next few days. Now, what we are trying to do is engaging with the states in a spirit of competition. We are talking to states that, look, let's say, Chandrajit, you want to come in and make these phones in India. We are talk offering all the states that, look, Chandrajit wants to come in and make these phones in India. Who's willing to get the best deal and the fastest opportunity? So we found that, let's say, when we were promoting medical devices, we found Telangana really go proactive and capture that business because he offered the best terms to that industry. And he's been able to build up a whole park to support medical devices in Telangana. The moment we said we're going to promote medical uh, APIs, in India, I had the chief minister of a small state like Himachal Pradesh call me up and say, Piyushi, we want to have the uh, medical uh, uh, park, the cluster that you're developing in Himachal Pradesh. We already have a pharma industry there. We want to expand that. And I'll give every support that they require. And I think it was followed with a letter within the next uh, four or five hours. So my ministry is working with Himachal. So we have brought in the challenge mode in working with the states. And I think states which don't uh, support the center in its initiatives for regulatory certainty, safe and stable policies, and modern outlook towards business, a more business friendly environment will remain left behind. Their people will lose opportunities and work. They'll start losing revenues. And that realization is dawning in all the states. So you saw Maharashtra, even in the midst of pandemic, having the magnetic Maharashtra uh, outreach. So it's reflective that the states are also coming forward in this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. One last question with your permission because it's on railways. And uh, it says that the Indian railways came out in full force to manage the crisis period with trains to take back migrant workers and also coaches being reconfigured as hospital beds. So the fantastic move that you did. What role did the private sector play in this endeavor? And how can such a partnership in railway manufacturing and other railway services be expanded? Well, incidentally, every morning I do a review. It used to be three times a week, if you recall, Chandraji. So as we were speaking, I was clearing my desk also. Yes, yes. As of yesterday, we have moved 4,553 Shramik special trains to move the migrants back. But the number is continuously reducing. So from 31st of May till 21st June, it's come down to double digit. And yesterday, only three trains. So the demand is over. We've sorted out all those who wanted to go back home. We started 230 regular trains also. Regular trains on the regular route. 30 of them are high-speed air-conditioned Rajdhani trains. 200 are uh, the trains with the common man uses, non-AC largely. And uh, those trains are also now uh, gradually picking up traction. I must confess that they are not going full in most cases. People are still hesitant and resisting travel. So we have that uh, situation. But uh, I think the railway people, after all, don't forget, they also have families. They also know the risks of Corona. They also are concerned about health and safety. 
not one person out of my 1.25 uh, million people, not one employee ever said no to a single job. We use this time to complete long pending maintenance works. We use this time to improve on uh, facilities, infrastructure facilities, and we kept the freight trains running and moved the migrants back. This would mean that we moved about roughly 6 million migrants through the railway network. Over 6 million. Actually, this would be close to 7.5 million migrants have been moved by the train so far. 7.5 million. And I think uh, my compliments to the 1.25 million in, uh, railway employees, their families for their support, and also to several stakeholders in the private sector who also helped us in keeping this going. After all, railways works with a lot of support from the private sector. They do our onboard cleaning services. They provide a number of other support systems, catering, food, all of that. Thank you very much for your support. Too. Going forward, you can support us in a million ways. Simple example. I just recently said that any supplier to the railways, once approved by RDSO, or any production unit or any zonal or divisional railway is deemed approved across the Indian railways. I want more suppliers for all the products that I buy. That will improve my quality, that will improve my price competitiveness and will help me serve the people better. So I want all of you to come with ideas how we can do a better job to increase our speed. We are now going to start 150 private trains.